Welcome to the Wolf Keeper. A show that's just about everything that you can maybe think about. Everything that you can feel that's inside of your heart. What I need for you to do right now is spend the next hour relaxing. Just stop your day before you go into 12 o'clock. I just want you all to close your minds, open your hearts. And relax and go on this journey with me. It's a beautiful place that you're about to go. Because I want to make you feel. I want to just open you up and think about some things you never really thought about. Right now. The Wolf Keeper. Come on. Good morning, y'all. Come on. It's the Wolf Keeper Show. Get ready. Come on. Let's go. Yeah, Woo. yeah, it's the Wolf Keeper Show, uh, your boy, Tordiano Sanzoni, yeah, Chanel Nell, my boy Tyrone Scott, somewhere rocking the, the doggy dogs, Denzel's in his house, Shaq and Shaq. And for all the people out there that love us, we love you back. Thank you all. Get ready for an amazing show. We're the Wolf Keeper. Get ready. Here we go. Uh. Morning, it's Toriano Sanzoni, the Wolf Keeper. Ah! Yeah, I'm feeling amazing. It's Mutt Mondays, Make Monday Fridays with my co host, partner in crime, Schnelli Nelly. Are you there? Good morning. And special guest, live and direct from the East Coast from Bow Wow Labs. Ooh, we've been talking. On the weekend, the infamous, world famous, Jana Devereaux. Hi, thank you for having me today. Jana Devereaux. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love how you say it. Is that proper? It was absolutely proper. Jana Devereaux. I just, I I'm so to, excited to talk to you. I have to all my intros. <laughs> I just, I love Jana Devereaux. It's that's so Hollywood and it's so New Orleans. I just like all my I like all my cousins from New Orleans. So that's like Devereaux's like everywhere. Like everyone's a Devereaux. Like that's like that's so French Creole. So today on Mondays, Chanel, know what we're gonna do? What we're we doing? We're going to make Jana Devereaux a 
honorary Creole. <laughs> so uh, today you get to say it. you get to say that you're Creole all day today. You can use your Creole powers, so that means you can make gumbo today, jambalaya, and you can drink a lot today. All of that actually sounds good too. Yeah, I'm actually a better eater of all of those things than a maker, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I can definitely yes. take some time, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you you are amazing because like you are one of the first people that I know. I'm 20 years. I'm, I'm not even making this up, and I know the other person. Shout out to Joe Shear of um, Avengers Pet Food. He's the only other person in 20 years that ever talked about dogs and chewing. Ever. 20 years. Like, I remember the day I sat in his living room. <laughs> He's just a nerd. He knows I, we say that about his wife even says Holly Shearer. Peace out to Holly Shearer and the whole Avenger family. But he sat there. We had a whole, whole conversation. It actually wasn't even a conversation. It was a seminar because he was breaking down chewing for me. And I just sat there like, wow, I never, like, how does one person know so much about chewing? Until you and I talked on the phone, you also talked about chewing in. But Bow Wow Labs has invented a device to make pets safe from, they love, bully sticks are like crack for dogs. Like they see bully sticks, like, I know people have gotten bitten over bully sticks. Dogs have like getting the dog fights over bully sticks. Bully sticks are like Reaganomics in the 80s, right? I mean, that's a bad. That's I need to get Bentley one. He's I'm never going too far. I'm oh, going, I'm going okay, too far by calling it the... the, the <laughs> <laughs> the drug of the doggy world. But they dogs go nuts over bully sticks. And your company, can you just tell us about Bow Wow Labs, who you are, and yeah. bully sticks? Yeah, thank you. So Bow Wow Labs is this great innovative company that um, started uh, in 2018 with uh, this amazing device, uh, safety device, um, because the founder of our company was giving bully sticks to his dogs for the benefits of chewing. And when you are dealing with uh, bully sticks, which I'll hold one up for you, uh, dogs love them so much and they're tactile and they can use their paws and hold them and navigate them. But when they get to that last one inch, right. they no longer have the ability to put their paws on it. So they just put it in their mouth. And oh. I call it get in my belly syndrome. I know get my dogs my have belly. it. That when it gets to that last bit, they want right. it to just get in their belly so they swallow it. Oh, no. And so what ends up happening is you have a potential for a choking hazard or even worse, intestinal obstruction. So what the Bully Buddy safety device does mm. that uh, we, uh, we invented holds the bully stick in place. So this is the Bully Buddy that I'm holding here. It's a bone-shaped um, device that has a screw, and you put the bully stick in the center of it, twist it. Wow. And then I can't pull it out, your dog can't pull it out, and they, more importantly, can't get it down to that last one inch and choke on it. So that's how the company started. Um, and then we started realizing that there's also, there's a lot of bully sticks on the market, but they're not all created equal. And so granted, they all come from the same place. If anyone isn't aware, um, they come from they're the genitalia of, of cows, of steers and bulls. I never... Um, yep. So they're a single ingredient treat. Um, high in protein, low in fat, so they're really good for your dog. Um, but some of these animals are raised on, uh, they're given hormones to make them grow, or they're fed, you know, um, corn-fed meal, which is uh, high in GMOs. So we have a bully stick that is from hormone-free cows that are grass-fed. So you're wow. not getting all of the toxins um, that you might get from other bully sticks. And on top of it, we call them safe fit, safe fit bully sticks because we actually hand select um, all of our bully sticks to make certain that they fit the corresponding size bully buddy. So we really try to set you and your dogs up for success to make certain that um, it works every time the right way. I love that name, Bully Buddy. Like, that's so mm -hmm. cute. A Bully Buddy. Who, who came up with that name? Not me. <laughs> um, one of the original founders um, came that's up with it. I'm, I'm not sure if it was our CEO or the, the inventor, but um, it, it's, it's a great name. It's a so great initially, name. It's, it's like a snack or a treat? Okay, it's actually he's looking at me like what <laughs> Bentley is going to love a bully stick. So it's actually what we consider a long-term chew. So a long-term okay. chew is generally going to be anything that takes your dog more than 10 minutes to chew and eat. 
Um, right. The reason okay. why long-term choose why Toriano and I were talking about how important they are is because they, when you are, when a dog is chewing for a certain period of time, you know, you're getting mm -hmm. some dental, um, benefits from it. Okay. It's scraping mm -hmm. the biofilm from the teeth. It's, uh, encouraging saliva, which is rich in lysosome, which is an antibacterial mm. that is found in the saliva. It also is in the act of chewing encourages um, serotonin and dopamine release. So mm. it helps encourage and support a, help a healthy mental state. Um, it provides calmness. It provides mental stimulation, which makes them tired mm -hmm. as Toriano can attest, you know, give a dog a 10 minute job and it's going to be tired faster than if you take it for a four mile walk. So um, that doesn't mean you exchange one for exercise. Exercise is obviously a hugely important part of the canine mm -hmm. um, lifestyle, but long-term. It just stimulates the brain. Valuable. Yeah. It's very valuable mm -hmm. to their, to their routine. John, and, okay. I, and I know I can, I can nerd out with you all day and some people that are into dogs and chewing um, can nerd out all day. Can you break some of those terms down? Those, those, what you just mentioned with the dopamine, um, yes. like what so, that means for people that might not know. So dopamine and serotonin are, uh, some neurotransmitters that basically are in our brain that make us feel happy. So it's kind of like when you're stressed out and you chew gum, you suddenly feel this sudden sense of, a more calm state, it's because the act of chewing is actually helping your brain uh, release chemicals that are making you uh, in, a, in a calmer state. And that's, and, and, I, and I always mention to people too that dogs need to crush, you need to like use your teeth for what they were designed for, you know, and okay. that they need to tear, they need to, they need to crumble, they need to crush with the molars. Um, Cause I, I, it, the thing you and I were talking about, my puppies, um, whether it's my Frenchie, a brand new Frenchie puppy or a Rottweiler puppy, we have them off mother's milk um, probably 50% by the time they're three weeks old because they're crushing with their teeth. And by the time they're five weeks old, they're for sure devouring an entire chicken quarter. And when I look at when people come get my puppies at eight weeks old, they're, they're just something that's very different from any puppy they've seen before, but they've been using, developing their motor skills. They use their paws to hold, they use their heads to pull, use their teeth to tear, to rip, to crush. Um, right. And then you can just see their, I, I say it, their eyes sit different. And um, this is one of my secret sauces with dog training because I just, I go to the butcher and I let the dogs crush. So like right now, I have 15 dogs in my school. There's no barking because they have food. Is a, I look at food as a job, and, and so do you. Um, yes. But Bully Labs, though, how did you guys? I mean, someone had to really be nerding out to say, "I love I love inventions," because you actually that can you just pick that up again? That is so yeah. cool. So someone said, "Hey, I'm going to actually design this object to stick this in there," because that's a huge. And I hate to say it, but so last week we were, we were talking to um, Denise um, Fleck about um, CPR and pet safety. And the number one thing she was saying that dogs um, experience that require safety is uh, require help in CPR, not, not CPR, but pet, um, pet um, 911, if you will, is um, choking. Right. Doing dog. a finger sweep is a very important thing with dogs. To yeah, dogs. so, I mean, who, yeah. how, how, like, how long has this been around? Like, how did people, like, get to the point? How did someone get to the point of saying, I'm going to draw this out? <laughs> did someone's dog die? Did someone, like, right. no, what was well, the big so, motivation? So the inventor had given it to his dog, and his dog did choke on it. And so he went home thinking there has to be a better way because oh. he knew – did all all the benefits of, Did he, die? he knew all the benefits of, of no, he didn't. He actually right, the dog survived, luckily. Um, um, so he was trying to determine how can I continue to give long-term chews to my dog because of all the various benefits. And really what he started doing was looking around on the internet. And the only thing that he could find was to use vice grips and to have vice grips attached to the end. Well, you and I both know you don't want vice grips anywhere near your dog's mouth because if they chew on that the wrong way, even though their teeth are made to tear, shred, rip, and crush bone, yeah, crush it you put it on, on metal, you're breaking teeth, right? So wow. he had this idea that there has to be another way. So how can I create a vice grip-like device 
that functions in that capacity without putting a dog in a different type of jeopardy. And so that's how he, um, this is actually our second design. The first um, design of the Bully Buddy was a little bit differently shaped. It was more of a, um, uh, it kind of, it was bulbous and stood upright and you twisted the top, but we found that it didn't really work for dogs over a certain weight size that they were able to um, navigate it differently. So this is our second design, um, the second set of plans that we came out with. Our, and this is the one that has been doing phenomenally well. And to answer your point, or the question you had before is for most people, when a dog had an issue where they swallowed this or choked it or where they had that 24 to 48 hour period where they were waiting, hoping that their dog pooped out the piece that they swallowed, that was pretty much a point where they realized I'm never giving my dog a bully stick again because they didn't have a safe way to provide a long term chew. So the bully buddy really has um, brought bully sticks back to a lot of dogs, which is you know great for all the reasons we already identified. Besides the fact that it also really works their jaw muscles. And I think a lot of people don't think about the jaw muscles and it is a muscle that needs to be exercised. Absolutely. So that's a real thing. Can you go back earlier? Because I don't think it's common. I mean, I know it, you know, it. we're dog nerds, but I don't think it's common knowledge for everyone out there to know. Um, like Chanel, did you, have you heard of bully sticks before prior to this? I haven't. And I'm so interested because I'm on a constant hunt for, looking for treats that will last, you know, cause Bentley, like he gets his, his, he gets his treat. He runs off to his little spot. And then like a minute later, he's back like, okay, what's, where's the next one? So <laughs> you're going to love these Chanel because um, they can actually last some dogs between 45 minutes to an hour. Oh um, gosh. Yeah. So we have like what I was saying, the safe at bully sticks. I'm going to take some out so you guys can actually see them. Okay. Uh, they come in six inch or 12 inch lengths. So I only happen mm -hmm. to have six inch lengths here, but these would be considered our thick ones. So these would be really good for dogs that are like 45 pounds um, or, or larger. Um, okay. It sounds like you have a smaller dog. So he might want a thinner one, but they are, um, I don't know the, any other nicer way of saying this, but they are the genitalia of um, bulls and steers. So, and that's um, a fun okay. fact. I didn't, I didn't, I, I knew it was a part of the the cattle family somewhere, but I didn't know that. Yeah. Now, is that true for all of them? That's where they're coming from. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the muscle. Yes. So Can you know, as far as I, as far as I feel, you know, at least they're using every bit of the animal, right? How that's, did they figure that out? <laughs> you know, I. How do they figure that out? That's I don't funny. know. I have a feeling that they probably somewhere, you know, 50, 60 years ago, they were probably watching a dog that was probably at a farm and they were probably just throwing bits because that's kind of how things used to be today, right? Farmers would just throw odd parts to their, to their dogs and someone probably was like, wow, that's taken a really long time for them to eat. I and, that. and that was that. I can see. Oh, Oh, is that Timmy Yammy? Timmy Yammy is here. She yes. wants to ask a question. <laughs> Good morning. I have a qu What is your name? Uh, Jonna. John. I have a question uh, regarding the bully sticks because uh, I used to get them for my um, big breed. I had a um, press canario, so, a, you know, a Spanish master. Mm -hmm. And I would get those in the um, uh, antlers for him because that was the only thing. And the gold nuts would last him a while to the rubber. I don't know if you're right. familiar with those. Yes, yes. But uh, I haven't seen those adapters that you're talking about. Do they sell them in the pet store? So the, this is the exciting thing. Right now, Bow Wow Labs is, uh, has been selling them direct to consumers on our website only and through uh, our Easy Ship package. But starting August 3rd, we actually just opened up our independent retail program. So be, one of the things that we learned from COVID is that, you know, as a small business, we want to support other small local businesses and how better to do that than to get into small independent retail stores and you. have them have this resource. So um, we opened up our program to retailers. We have a few signed up. So I would encourage Yay. you if you have a local store, like a mom and pop shop or, um, you know, maybe it's not a mom and pop, but a, a small Someone business like the, like the, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, go tell them to look at Bow Wow Labs and sign up with us and they can carry them in the store. They can carry our safe and bully sticks, which I don't know if you um, heard me say, um, but we actually hand pick them and make certain that they're right sized for whatever size bully buddy you need. We have six sizes that range for a dog up to 15 pounds to a dog over 150 pounds. So um, oh, okay. we, re we really want to set our dogs up to succeed. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what it's all about, right, Toriano? So um, yeah. whatever we can do. Because, yeah, in the past, when it would get small, I would just get rid of it because I was afraid that my dog would uh, swallow it. Right. However, the dog that I have now, uh, he's a Frenchie. He's actually more destructive than my big mastiff. Like, uh, even <laughs> with antlers. Like, I could give my big breed an antler and uh, it would last him for weeks because I would just give it to him as a, you know, a, a treat mm -hmm. to uh, exercise the jaw muscles. Mm -hmm. But... My Frenchie could demolish an uh, antler in a, like, well, not completely demolish it, but he would gnaw it down to half the size in, in like a week. And I'm thinking, okay, his teeth are like half the size of my big breed dog, but he is way more destructive. Yeah, with that's, chewing. An aggressive, that's an aggressive chewer. It's yes. Short, main and, complex and, him. <laughs> and so that's what made me hesitant about even using those for him because they're not as sturdy. They're not sturdy like how if you were using an antler, you know. Well, they're, they're different, obviously. So an antler is going to be chock full of calcium and trace minerals. And um, it comes, obviously, from the, the ant horn of the right. or, or the elk or whatnot. And this is going to be more... Um, muscle meat so it's, oh, right. it's a little bit more fibrous so it um uh, what i would recommend you do if you have if he's that aggressive is get uh like a 12 inch thick or jumbo stick and give him a little bit at a time and take it away in half an hour increments because technically you know i guess when you when a dog has been chewing on something for over 45 minutes are they getting the same benefit or are they just trying to just eat now, right? At, at oh, right, point. yeah. I they never let them have more than like 20 minutes uh, yeah. with either of my dogs. Yeah. But that's why I was just concerned because I didn't know if that would be something that, you know, because I haven't uh, seen anything that would keep them from being able to, you know, just take the rest of it and, and swallow it. Yes. And I was actually concerned that, you know, that would be something that he would, because from the time he was six weeks old, he was chewing on stuff. Like I had to baby proof my house when he was six weeks old and I never had to do it with my, you know, um, uh, Mastiff because yeah. he didn't even dream of chewing on the stuff that my puppy, you know, chews on. And it's a destructive kind of chewing. So I never even thought of using the bully sticks for him. But that's why I was just wondering if that's something that, you, so you can use it for all size dogs. And yeah, just absolutely. It, just, it depends on what size you want to buy, but I would, they're highly recommended for puppies, especially when they're going through their teething uh, phase. And Well, he's 10 months old now, so he's done with teething. But, well, he's, but he's still going through his growing uh, I call it the stress, right? The stress that's different than ours, but the stresses that go along with uh, developing. So it makes sense that he's an aggressive chewer. I don't know, Toriano, you tell me, but I find that most dogs until they're about 24 months, they're still kind of considered, they're still puppies in my eyes. Yeah, um, and they still show those same destructive behaviors. So giving them something constructive to chew on that helps to calm their mind and engages you know, their natural instinct to chew is going to really help to, um, to tire them, to calm them, um, and to fulfill, you know, this instinctual desire, really, to, to let them be dogs. And, and John, you, you, you made me think of something else, too, that I always tell clients, and that's, you know, let this be like their paycheck, because dogs, I mean, most dogs just go completely bonkers over bully sticks. Um, seriously, I've seen, literally, I've, for real, I've seen people, um, or I've, I've had clients come to me not being even getting one out of their dog's mouth. Um, so I've, I tell people, you know, do a little obedience, you know, sit here, down there, stay there, and then boom, let that be their high reward um, after the dog has accomplished a great task. It can really 
I'm excited to get some of these to use as um, training items um, because um, especially if it's a brand new, uh, you know, someone that has just gotten a shelter dog, it's a lot easier taking that entire blue item away from them versus sticking your hand down there. Um, Cause the, the best dogs sometimes have been their owners, especially if it's something that they're really into um, cause you've activated their food drive. So that would be great for trainers too, to um, practice with dogs that have food dominance because uh, that's a lot easier to get out of their mouths. But, um, yeah, I would, I like – I mean, I don't like letting a dog have any toy item for over 10, 15 minutes because it loses its value, and it loses, right. especially for something that they're way into. I want, I want to back up one second, though, um, for anyone – any pet professionals that are out there because we definitely want to support and carry that at um, Wolfkeeper University. Um, so would they just go to your website? Is there someone they have to specifically talk to if they want is the affiliate program? How does that work? For for, like? um, there would be an affiliate program. If you have a brick and mortar store, then you could carry the products in store, but otherwise it would be an affiliate program for, uh, for anyone else. Um, so yes, you can reach out to our customer service and just inquire. And I, I'm cool. sure we, would we would love to have you on as an affiliate. Oh, we're going to, we're, we're, we just have made ourselves the exclusive distributor for the entire Midwest. <laughs> we'll be, we'll be I don't have that authority to we'll say be, okay to that. You just but. gave me the go ahead. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have the authority. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> Hold on now. That's not cool. I just made you honorary Creole for the day. Chanel was a witness and now uh, you're uh, holding back on me. Uh, That's not possible. I'll put in a good word, but it's not my, that's not my job. <laughs> so we have to dive deeper into who John Devereaux is. I love seeing that name. Okay. <laughs> John Devereaux. Um, so outside of Bow Wow Labs, you are also just pet nutritionist expert. I mean, you and I were talking about, you know, you can't out train a bad diet. And that a lot of people, you know, back when I was growing up, they were just, you know, a strong heart, mighty, mighty dog, <laughs> you know, and like, you know, and you had a little, um, and Caesars with a little Westie on it. I mean, you didn't have a lot, you didn't have a lot of dog food options. Now, I swear every time I go there, I saw something yesterday, a bag I'd never even heard of before. It was called Montana and it had like this cool, crazy there's so many dog foods out there now and there's dog food supplements and vitamins and just, you literally, you can go nuts just trying to pick a food that's out for the dog. Um, let talk about pet nutrition, why it's important to feed your dog a great quality food. Cause sometimes what I hear all the time is I don't even eat like that myself. So why am I going to go spend, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars You know, people think is people think I'm joking when I say I know people that spend close to over a thousand dollars per month on one dog for their diets. I mean, you can, it, you can get as elaborate as you want, but can you speak to right. the importance of pet nutrition? Yeah. I mean, technically the way I respond when someone asks that question to me, right. Is, or makes the comment to me, I feel like the human body has adapted um, to a lot of the, I'm going to call them toxins for lack of a better word, but the toxins, the sugar, the enriched foods that we've been putting in that have had all the nutrients taken out of them. Our bodies have adapted in a way with an asterisk because we're sicker than ever. We're mm. fatter than ever. Mm. Um, so I don't know that we've really adapted, but mm. we've conformed. Uh, our bodies yes, have conformed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chanel. Mm. Yes. No, the canine. Canine oh, Tammy. Thank you. Yes. The canine body is so beautifully designed and we're trying to project how we eat onto them. Mm. And here's yeah. the problem with that. We are, we are omnivores and they're carnivores. And so at a base level, yes, we can feed them better because everything that goes into their mouth matters, but how we feed them really is what's most important. They're not supposed to eat like we do. Um, so, you know, uh, decades back, what we were doing is when we were, uh, less aware we were extrapolating we were looking at what humans eat and basically saying that's what our dog should eat and what we're realizing now as we get more savvy and as we start looking more and doing more field tests is that dogs bodies respond much differently and they are also becoming more sick because we mm. are not feeding them properly so 
what I'm finding, and I will tell you, even as a clinical pet nutritionist, I look at food bags. I have a hard time without doing my due diligence, without calling and doing a lot of research on the ingredients that are in the foods um, because there's just not enough transparency. So it, it's hard for a pet parent to really say, you know, I'm paying $80 for a bag of dog food a month, which is a lot of money to a lot of people, you know, why, why is that not good enough? And so as a nutritionist, what I always say is feed as best you can, and then improve it a little bit uh, as much as you can with fresh food. Um, I'm not a huge fan of dry kibble. It's what most people, you know, can afford and what most people feed their dogs. So if you're looking at the kibble, you really have to look at the ingredient panel on the back of the bag. Look and see where the first five to seven ingredients, mm. where are they coming from? Are they coming from animal meat? Are they coming from beans? Are they coming from rice? Are they coming from corn? If it's not coming from animal meat, then you're not really feeding a carnivore body the way it should be fed. So there's, it, it, there's so much confusion, right? And there's so much money to be made. And I hate to say that, but there's so much money to be made in the pet world, mm -hmm. the pet industry that I feel like some of these companies, and I don't know any of the ones that you just spoke to Toriano, but some of them are just, you know, um, jumping on the train to try to make money and the dog's health isn't necessarily um, the primary factor. And it, it makes me sad. I mean, just to add to it, and I'll be the bad guy and say it. I mean, it's like Nuka and, you know, I'm just, it's the same company. It's just different bags. You know, one day, one day I even called them. I I called them up and asked, like, "What's the difference?" And the, the woman was like, "Who are you?" No, I'm not, like literally, she I got transferred three times once I realized I was having fun with them. Like, well, what's really the difference between Yukonuba and Imes? And it's really not. It's just a price difference. You're paying for the color of the bag. You're paying for the shape of the food. There's not a lot of um, nutrients in the food once you. If you see, I mean, that's the thing two people don't realize that um, one of my buddies was in, the, he makes his own dog food, like his own kibble. But I mean, there's whole companies out there that sub companies that just buy carcasses all day. Like just, there's different places I mean, people never, I never thought about it, someone told me that, but there's carcasses that come from all around the world. I mean, you know, there's vets that have euthanized um, animals that they don't dispose of it properly. There's roadkill, there's farm animals. I mean, yeah, they call it the, they call it the four D's. So the four, the four D's, D's are dead, diseased, dying, or disabled. And in yeah. the four D's, meat from any of those four can actually be considered suitable for pet food. Right, because you remember the big dog food recall. What was that in '08 when they were finding yeah. phenobarbital in the um, dog food, which is the cocktail they used to euthanize dogs. Right. So it was literally dogs being fed dogs and other animals. A lot of and and I, I, I truly believe I me mean, they're in cahoots with the pet with the veterinary industry um, because you know a lot of the vets out there their their nutritional program is only two to three weeks long. I mean some vets go on further, but sometimes you go to the vet and then they just will um, give you science diet prescription version to help your dog with this upset stomach. But then they your dog's been eating this inferior dog food and. We know now. We didn't always know that. I mean, um, our dogs um, grew up on table food. I mean, I, my great grandmother she would add maybe a can of you know the the strong cart. You know, with the, remember the the big dumb can with the German Shepherd on it. She'd add that, mix it with some, and then maybe some maybe some kibble. That's how Bentley eats. <laughs> and I just feel like the culture of pets. Sorry, Toriano, not to cut you off. Like the culture of pets is changing. Um, and like John has said, there's money to be made because now we're treating our pets as like family, you know, like this, this is legit, like our kid, my mom would go up and I'm guilty of it too. Like if we're getting us something to eat at the restaurant, Bentley's going to get him something to eat too, like <laughs> a kid's meal. Literally we went to dinner and Bentley came with us and they're like, yeah, can we get like the chicken tenders, um, <laughs> kids meal? And they're like, looking like, well, for who? And it's for Bentley. So, so can I interject uh, something? Mm -hmm. I, I do have friends as well that feed their dogs like uh, table food or, you know, like human food. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times people don't realize for animals, because when we have food prepared for humans, they 
are also uh, incorporated with uh, a lot yeah. of seasonings and things that dogs should not have. Like I right. feed my, I mix uh, human food with my dog's food. Like I'll buy ground turkey, ground beef, and and chicken, and I mix that with. But it's not seasoned or have anything. Yeah, and that's why I said yeah. Because I feel I feel bad when I give him some of this stuff. I mean, I don't season any of it, but he won't eat any of his dog food without like something mixed to it. Like if I give right, so you can, and, yeah, that's, I mean, my dog is like that. He's so used to, food. I mean, I've never given my uh, mm-hmm. uh, dogs just dried kibble anyway, because that would be like a human just eating cereal every day. Who wants to just, you know, yeah. dry cereal every day. So I change up his food, but it's still just prepared with nothing added to it because a lot of times people don't realize like they're increasing the amount of sodium that their dog is getting, mm-hmm. which is not good for them, the amount of sugar that they're actually getting because even humans don't realize how much sugar they're getting just in stuff, not added sugar, but just the amount of glucose that's in foods that are right, naturally yeah. here. So, well, yeah. Um, and I have to say, I applaud you, Tammy, for taking the initiative to add some fresh food to your dog's bowl, because that's, you know, what I had mentioned before for the people that, may not be able to afford or are smart enough to understand that they don't have the know-how to make a complete and balanced home cooked diet Mm -hmm. or a complete and balanced raw diet, that if you can add fresh food to your dog's bowl, and when I say fresh food, it is, you know, unseasoned, no spices, you know, some green beans, if you wanted to, some cucumbers, low starch veggies, some high antioxidant antioxidant fruits, some meat. And what if your dog doesn't eat any of that? (laughs) Like he well, needs to take a vitamin or something. Well, no, so but you're talking about that if it's not meat, if it's not meat, he will not eat it. Like he doesn't eat French fries. No, you no, well, he, he shouldn't, shouldn't eat French fries. <laughs> he shouldn't eat French fries <laughs> anyway. That's it's a real dog. dog. Most dogs, look, most dogs will eat anything. No, Chanel, you have a real dog. You no, have a real no, dog. Yes. Like a carnivore. He knows yes. he's a carnivore. <laughs> yes. Right. Like if it's not meat, I'm not even. No, Chanel. Right? What you do is you just incorporate. <laughs> see, I shred. Like I'll take carrots and 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 uh, shred it up. It's mixed in with his food. I've even cut up apples, you know, so it's not that they won't eat it. They don't even Girl, know Tammy, that. Girl, Tammy, really needs to go to boot camp because he will definitely spit she, all of that out. She I'll she Oh, no, because you give him too much human food, so he doesn't even recognize Chanel, uh, with the told, carrots and all of that. As I told you before, you cannot feed Bentley Doritos. Going <laughs> this. Come on, Toriano, cut it out. We're not doing that. No, <laughs> so I think. And so what's really important when we're talking about fruits and veggies, just I want to interject here, is that you want to make certain that you break down the cell walls. Dogs lack the amylase enzyme in their saliva to actually start uh, breaking down carbohydrates hydrates at, at the beginning of the digestive process, which begins mm. in the mouth. So if you're feeding carrots, uh, Tammy, shredding is fine, but you really want to break those cell walls down. So in a better, a better way of doing it, I actually prefer to give um, raw foods. And when I say foods, I'm not talking just about meat. I'm talking about the fruits and the veggies. Um, mm-hmm. Just put them in a food processor, put them in a blender, put them yep. if you have a juicer in a juicer, because that's going to keep all of the nutrients, all of the vitamins, all the minerals in its uh, pure state and deliver that to your dog in a way that their body can actually benefit from those nutrients. If you don't break down the cell walls, then really, um, it, the easiest way of thinking about it is you're just giving it to them as a filler. Like if you give your dog a green bean, you're just making their their stomach full. You're not really getting, they're not getting any real nutrients out of it. Um, mm-hmm. So that would be a recommendation that I would give to you, Demi, is just oh, yeah, throw it did, into a blender John. or something like that. I did just I mean, find that out it, yesterday but... too when I took uh, this class for uh, first aid for pets. Perfect. So I did find out yesterday that that would be the best way because yeah. uh, the instructor uh, Denise she was explaining how dogs don't initially process that, and they found that even when uh, they were given antacids to dogs in in the solid form, it was still in their stomach as whole chunks, and it looked like calcium like bone in there because the enzymes weren't breaking it down Mm -hmm. for them to uh extract the nutrients Mm -hmm. from it so i did find out yesterday that the best way to do that would be to you know actually blend it up so yeah just break down the cell walls so so that because if you think about it in the wild and this is when i'm thinking about canine nutrition 
I always go back to basics. How would they be eating in right. if, if they were on their own? So if mm-hmm. they were catching the rabbit and they were eating the rabbit, they would be eating the pre-digested right. fruits and vegetables that that rabbit right. would have eaten, right? So we just have to kind of think of it in that capacity whenever we add anything. And so if I can ask you one favor, Chanel, please don't give your dog anything fried. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, no, no chicken tenders. It's not doing Chanel. anything. To, it's not doing anything to set him up for health. I can yeah. assure you of that. And all it's going to really be doing is creating inflammation in his little body, um, mm-hmm. which is, you know, the the start of so many types of disease in the body. That if you can avoid it, please do. <laughs> okay. And I, I, was, I was going to say too that he doesn't get it often, but just like every now and then, I'm guilty of no, it. But you know, he doesn't need it. At all. Yeah, but he doesn't need it. And so this is the one thing that I can say is that we associate food with love. And I know we do Mm because I do too with my dog. So just think on that because dogs give us unconditional love. And so we really, um, that's one of the reasons why we spend so much time and take them with us and why they are family. Because in the world that we currently live in, to be able to come home to a dog that gives you unconditional love and hug and waggy tails and licks and really you can do no wrong in their eyes we want to give them something mm-hmm. back so if food is the way that you want to give them back do it in a way that doesn't obviously make them gain weight because obesity is another huge issue that's going to make you know that has an onslaught of issues um, for canine health but give them a different type of treat so if you've identified that your dog likes you know meat because he is mm-hmm. a real dog get an egg <laughs> get an egg. If you can get like a, if a neighbor has chickens, get an egg and you can either, you know, cook the egg white and leave the yolk raw. You can give it a whole egg raw if you want. So you can give him a treat in a way that is going to be in line with how his body should be eating. You can give him um, sardines. You can give, you know, you can give things that will help, um, help his body be be healthy rather than give him food that is going to do the opposite. And can, okay. can, you, can you speak upon my mentor? I mean, 20 years ago, it was introduced to me. Good one on Marlene. Um, God bless her soul. She's no longer with us. But her Malinois, she would feed them livestock. So she would um, purchase chickens from them. And then um, I did that with my American Bulldog um, when I was raising them. And the thing that I found that, you know, the digestion of the fur, the beaks, the internal organs, they actually, they'd be full for maybe two, three days before you eat again, and the poop would be nice and solid and hard. But then, you know, obviously, it's kind of like the education with that because some people aren't comfortable with, you know, livestock and then maybe raw, prepackaged, raw, high-end kibble. But can you talk about that? Because that's kind of like a, a uh, like an elephant in the room. People don't talk about feeding dogs actual livestock, and I know there's a lot of dogs that do. Well, I mean, if you watch your dog in nature, if you let the chickens run loose, odds are your dog is going to go after them, right? Because that's their instinctual nature. That's how they would normally eat. And so, you know, the rabbits, the squirrels, everything that our dogs want to go after, um, if they were left to their own devices and could catch them, because I know a few dogs that can catch some squirrels, they would eat the whole thing. And the, yeah, and the fur, <laughs> the fur would actually act as, you know, which is something that is totally missing from all of our dogs' diets. Um, I actually, this is going to sound so gross, but I actually buy rabbit ears um, that still have the fur on them, and that's what I give my dogs as a treat, because the fur not only helps clean and almost acts as like a little brush against the teeth, but it also is a brush down the entire GI tract, right? So it's sloughing all of that stuff out because that would be something that would be natural. And so, um, fur is really important and livestock. I mean, they're naturally balanced. That's how the dogs would normally eat in the wild. So what we've tried to do is, or what we're trying to do now in the pet food industry. And when I say we, I don't mean Bow Wow Labs. I mean, we in the nutrition sector of it, um, is we're, there's some companies out there that are really trying to, mimic as closely as possible that uh, diet as it would be in nature. And so I haven't heard of anyone that's putting in the fur. And so the problem is when you people start thinking about beaks and claws, they're like, oh, but those are byproducts. Well, tracheas are byproducts, right? If you really think about it in the world of food, it, they're all byproducts. And byproducts on their own are not something that you want. But when they're in combination with 
balanced protein and the balance and the bones and the organs that actually becomes a complete meal to as a dog would eat in the wild. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at raw foods and um, the commercial raw, you have the two, there's two types of foods out there. You have raw HPP and you have non HPP. So HPP actually stands for high pressure pasteurization. What that means is that they are trying, it's a kill step to kill the, back, the pathogenic, the bad bacteria that's in the raw food so that it can then go to a store and, quote, be more safe for the dogs. When they kill pathogenic bacteria or the bad bacteria, they're also killing the good bacteria. So as far as I'm concerned, you're feeding your dog a, a more processed food. You think you're buying them raw. You think you're buying them something that's less processed and it's even more processed because of the kill step. Um, so non HPP foods, I'm a big fan of their raw because they're having that bacteria. Their bodies are designed. They have like a 1.2 to 2.0 pH level in their stomach. It's like carb battery acid that they can deal with the pathogenic bacteria as long as they are not completely immunocompromised. And the other asterisk to that would be if you, are in a household with someone that has an immune comp a compromised immune system, you need to be very careful about having raw around. You need to sanitize, obviously, as if you were like in a commercial kitchen so you don't make the human in the house sick either. Um, but that is the best way to feed. And so to go even one step further, now you have the, the animals that are being raised for raw food versus like hunted raw food. And so obviously hunted raw food is not something that you're going to find on the commercial market, but if you're doing it on your own, and you can, <laughs> that would and be you so can, awesome if you did though. It, it, well, it would be commercial. because, and I'll tell you why, <laughs> because the animals would be, their, their physique would be natural. They right. would be eating their natural diet. So they would have less fat, right? They would be as they should versus the farmed animals. Um, and I'm not saying this of all farms, but most farms, are feeding them meal, right? That is designed to plump them up. Right. So you're creating now a different balance of macronutrients of the protein versus the fat, you know, versus the carbs that are in those animals. And as I was saying to you over the weekend, Toriano, it's not only that you are what you eat, but you are what you eat and what they eat. So if right. you're eating, if you're feeding a chicken that has been fed insects, that's going to be a better diet than a chicken that's been feeding on soy products. Right. So it, it's, there's so many mm -hmm. levels that you can go so far down that rabbit right. hole um, that this is why it's so confusing to consumers and oh, why absolutely. their heads spin and they're like, my dog, what do I do? Um, and so every, and the best answer that I can give to someone in a general capacity, because I do a lot of one-on-ones with people, but the best general answer is do the best that you can within your financial means. Look at the ingredients on the packages. If it's a dry kibble, if it's a, um, if it's a raw, if it's a freeze dried, make sure animal protein, animal organs are in the first five to seven ingredients. Um, look at the guaranteed analysis, make certain that the, the protein, you know, is closer to 40% or more, um, which if you're in raw food, you're obviously well over that in a raw food land. Um, and canned food, if you have a choice and you can't do raw and you can't do home cooked and you can't afford freeze dried, you're better off feeding a high quality canned food than you are a kibble. And you know, you maybe just think of something too, because we do raw we use a fabulous um supplement i've used it for the last 18 years called new pro which has over 50 vitamins and minerals in it. and i mix them with oatmeal goat milk and our dogs that's what i've been using but um we've even seen when you talk about you are what you eat and and what they eat even with the chicken now i mean there's certain um we see these chicken thighs that are literally the size of like dinner plates um these chicken quarters everything rather. yeah um yeah that the dog stomachs are reacting. And this is us going to the butcher, buying human grade product and feeding to the dog. So, um, uh, I mean, I personally, I mean, I'm very seldom I stopped eating meat since December. So, um, but I can definitely, which I see a change in the dog. So if it's affecting the dogs, obviously it's affecting the humans in a lot of different ways, which I think a lot of times people say, 
I was saying earlier, people say that I don't even eat like that myself. You know, I'm not going to go spend. Could you for sure easily, would you agree, um, Jonna, that you could easily spend $300 per month on a premium diet for your dog? Depending on the weight, it could be even more than that. Depending but on the size of like your dog. Rock yes, wall. absolutely. For yes. a Rottweiler, an adult Rottweiler. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, to that point, I also say to people, you know, how do you want to spend your money? Do you want to spend your money at feeding your dog a premium food that's going to make them healthy and make them happy and make them, you know, uh, avoid going to the doctor? Or do you want to spend your money going to the doctor because they're sick, in which case you buy medications and you, you know, you could drop $300 in one visit. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're dropping $300 in one visit and it's usually more than that, for sure. yeah. And it's and it's an ongoing issue. You're spending well beyond thirty six hundred dollars a year potentially. So how do you want to spend your money? You know, I the only time my dogs ever go to the vet is when I bring them there for their yearly checkup, and I do that just because I want their I want to look at their blood every year. I want to make certain because that's that's the best indicator besides what comes out of both ends, right? <laughs> God forbid if they throw up, it's telling you what's going on, and what comes out of you know, in their stool, that's the best way of me identifying what's going on with their health besides their, their blood level. So, um, yeah, it, it's really how, how do you want to spend your money? And we, we talked about pet tummies um, a little while ago, a couple episodes ago, a company called Animal Bio, Biomine, um, about how dogs are having all these just different digestive problems, which led us into talking about dog foods because we – you know, a lot of times you go to the vet and there's, I mean, I have clients that come here with bags of stuff saying that the dog has to take this and he has to take this and he can't eat this. You know, the dog with all these just different things and it ultimately comes down to the dog food, but that goes back to education of, you know, what an animal should be eating, but then that ultimately goes back to what we as humans should be eating, you know, because it's really definitely difficult to talk to someone about you know, read the first five ingredients, which is we're dog nerds. We know that. So we're looking at the right. back of the bag and like, okay, I tell people, if you can't pronounce the first five things, don't get it. That's the rule of thumb. You no, know, but you know, well, even you if you this, can pronounce them, even if you can, pronounce, you can pronounce corn, you can pronounce brown rice. That's not how you feed a carnivore. And so right. it's, right, it's, it's but, thinking about the ingredients and most people don't know, but that's why I say if it, it should be coming from animal meat, right? Just well, and then too, too with that too. I mean, for the person that's going to, I mean, we brought up in the last episode where people are going to, you know, Walmart and they're buying Old Roy, which first five ingredients is everything that you don't. I mean, you're not going to ever feed your dog Old Roy. I'm not going to feed my dog Old Roy. I mean, one, just the 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 poop massacre alone is going to be crazy. I mean, they're going to be pooping all day, every day, you know. So, well, but. And that, that's a really important point and that I, most people don't really understand. That when you have a dog that defecates multiple times throughout the day and has very large poops, you're paying for food that's going right through their plumbing system. If the dog has large stool and multiple, many, many, many movements throughout the day and large stools at each time, basically their body is not absorbing the nutrients from the food. So the money that you're feeding, that you're paying to buy this food, you're basically just using to fertilize the ground. Dogs <laughs> eat a very specific diet that I prepare for them. Um, and there, I have an 88 pound pit bull who really has, not to be gross here, but poops maybe twice a day. And it might be the size of a clementine. His body is utilizing all of the nutrients of the food that I am putting in his body, which is one of the reasons why he's so healthy. My little girl, the same exact thing. So, you know, yeah, it's an indicator that your dog isn't getting out of the food what you think they are. And oftentimes by upgrading to a food. And if all you can afford is Old Roy, I'm not going to sit here and judge you. I love the fact that you've given a dog a home. You can feed the best that you can and then just add, like Tammy was saying, so add some fresh food whenever you can to just get them some nutrients that are in a whole form and not necessarily from a synthetic vitamin, right? Because the, our bodies um, respond differently to nutrients or vitamins that come from and trace minerals that come from real food versus from a 
synthetic vitamin. Um, so take whatever steps you can, though I really do think in the way that our, all of our spending habits are, you could probably spend an extra $10 a month and get to a, a slightly better food. Um, and then once you start seeing how, you know, your dog's skin is responding and they have a healthier coat and they have more energy, suddenly you start realizing that, ooh, maybe I should spend another $10 a month on this food because I didn't have to go to the vet last month because he wasn't itching or he didn't have an ear infection or he didn't have something. Food really is, mm-hmm. food is our medicine. Mm, I and, love that. And so, food is our medicine. Yeah. And so especially with the canine body that really that. is so effective at uh, healing itself. So, so with all of these GI issues that are going on, I mean, I there's so many factors. I mean, it's even, where is the water coming from? You know, is mm-hmm. it well water? Is it town water? Is, does the town water have the fluoride? And obviously it's a fluoride. Does it have chlorine in it? Those are all things that are going to directly impact the, the health of the animal. Then you're talking about the food. We're talking about, you know, uh, environmental toxins, pesticides, uh, the glyphosate from Roundup, like all of this plays a role in our animal's health. So if we can, um, in any capacity, feed them better and help their immune system be stronger and help them be in better health, then we're all going to be happier for it. Ms. Devereaux, you were amazing. Let me ask you this. So I know that it's a real thing because I tell people, you do that thing over there. I do dog training. I'm a professional. I've been doing it for 20 plus years. You know, so this person over here is a groomer. There's specific things and way to even groom a short hair dog. You do pet nutrition. Um, can people call you up for consultations? Do you do Zoom calls? If people want to find out how they can better their pets? Um, well, so I was until I started working with Bow Wow Labs, and that's taken up a lot of time. But what I have been doing with Bow Wow Labs is writing blogs. It's on our website, bowwowlabs.com. It's their Wags to Wellness newsletter that I write blogs. And if they want to reach out and have questions, they can always reach out to me through Bow Wow Labs, and I will help as best I can. And is that just I mean, because that's that's what I love to do, right? If I can't help a dog, then what am I doing? So right. if I I can I can help to as much as I can. Because you, I mean, you and I, um, we've talked so much before this. We just had, I had to get off because I, I could have kept on the phone forever. Um, <laughs> talking about just, I mean, we could go into chewing, stomachs, um, hunting for food, um, raw food. Um, it's hiding, a very, very deep hole that we could go down. <laughs> nutrients. I mean, because mm-hmm. this is amazing too, because all this stuff is new over the last 18 years. Um, that doesn't, just the technology in which you can feed the dog has completely changed. Um, but would you, would you like encourage people to, it's kind of a loaded question because I'm saying that yes, you should, but just maybe some encouragement where a person should seek out a local pet nutritionist and talk to them. I mean, here in Chicago, uh, we have, um, Liz's pet food. I don't know anyone that knows. I mean, Liz is the ultimate pet food nerd. I mean, she, on her spare time, there's not a, 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 a manufacturing plant she probably has not gone to like she's in the vats looking in and she t- knows more but uh, what's something that you can encourage someone wherever they are around the world to all our listeners and viewers as far as just seeking out a pet nutrition like that's a real thing you know to educate yourself on what your pet is eating yeah i mean you'd have to google us i guess um maybe <laughs> not a pet nutritionist but there are a lot of really informed and really passionate independent pet food owner or uh, pet store owners out there um, that, you know, the little, the boutique shops, the mom and top shop, the mom and pop shops that I was talking about earlier, you know, that's, they, they live eat, and breathe all things dog related. So um, they do have a, a really good basis of uh, foundation of nutrition. They may not have a certification, right. Um, but, but it's a good starting point. And if you need, there's a lot, I will tell you this. Um, thousands of dogs that I've helped with and, and done consultations with their owners and the majority of them just needed small tweaks, just needed small changes. Um, there are quite a few that I helped, uh, that the vets had kind of shook, you know, their heads were shaking because they didn't know what else to do and going back to basics and just working with some nutrition and working with some herbs to them also some herbalists. We were able to um, help the, get the body to heal itself. But again, just go to your local independent 
um, pet store and just say, you know, your dog, what are, what they're eating and what you're trying to accomplish. And they should be able to at least start you down that path. Um, and then if you need more extensive help, they usually, most pet store owners know of someone that a nutritionist that they can refer you to. Cause I will say that that's a real thing. And just in closing, let's say that, um, for everyone out there, get a nutritionist for yourself. I mean, I had yes. to, I had to hire someone. I mean, I, I mean, um, I was not the best eater. Uh, um, and it actually wasn't until I went to Jamaica on this last minute trip in December where a person told me like, you can increase your performance by changing your diet. It was someone I didn't even know. It was just like, out of the clear boom told me this. Look, I was walking down the street. This woman told me just like, you're not, you're not in shape. And I was like, what? wow, damn. Like, <laughs> welcome to Jamaica. Like, she yeah, right? did just me that. Too. I didn't even notice. And then it made me, this person started breaking down um, nutrition and eating in the harms of meat. Um, and Tam, I know you, you're going on your whole cycle. You haven't eaten, you've given up on your, you haven't eaten meat. Well, no, I, I'm, I didn't give up on meat. I just don't eat red meat and pork. Uh, I still eat uh, fish and, and uh, chicken. So I eat seafood and chicken, but no red meat and pork because that's, what I rely on to get my source of protein. But yeah, I don't eat red meat and, and uh, pork. I haven't, um, it'll be three years in September. Yay. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> no, that's, but that's, I just want to close it saying that encouraging people to find out how food works. Because a lot of people honestly don't understand, you know, I was joking about the Dorito, but some people honestly, you know, don't understand how food works, especially right now in the days of COVID. I mean, in my With opinion, us too. you know, yeah, I mean, the days of COVID right now, the, the best prevention is really understanding what you're putting in your body and wellness. Um, and then that will carry over to you wanting to make your pet eat better and be better by understanding um, nutrition as a whole. Um, or vice versa. I will tell you this. So many I, I started, I, I became a, a better eater. Once I went so far down the nutrition uh, hole for dogs, it opened my eyes to things that I hadn't thought of for myself. Um, and I want to eat healthier because I want to be around for my dogs. I love that. That's yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Your your dogs made you That's, your dogs made you eat better. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this has been an amazing. I can't believe we we knocked out an hour like super fast. <laughs> Thank you, Jana. Yes. Um, Jana. Yes, Jana. Thank you, Jana. Jana. Definitely. Um, I got to put you on the spot. Can we bring you back in January as a follower? I love it. I would love yeah. it. And then if anyone wants to find out about Bow Wow Labs, where should they go? BowWowLabs.com, or you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram uh, at Bow Wow Labs. Yeah. Thank you so much. This Thank is you so super much. informative. I want to thank everybody out there that tuned in all throughout Podbean, Wolfkeeper, um, Facebook, and Instagram to the whole Wolfkeeper pack. Rejoice, everybody. Tammy Tam to Chanelli Nell. Thank you all. Yeah. Go love somebody hard. The only one off the dog, and that's you, Toriano Sin. Don't even Peace, see love, and all. blessings. Yes. Have a lovely day. Peace and love. Thank you.